Welcome to Our Jewish Roots with insightful Bible teaching by Dr. Jeffrey Seif. In this program, the birth of a child leads to a test of faith. Our focus is on Isaac, today on Divine Deliverance. From the beginning, our Creator revealed His will to the common man. Individuals who listened to His call and responded in obedience. From the first Hebrew Avraham to the culmination of salvation in Messiah Himself, the Lord faithfully intervenes with His divine deliverance. We are so glad you've joined us today. I'm David Hart. I'm Kirsten Hart. I am Jeffrey Seif, and we are going on a journey. It continues from Abraham to Isaac and on into the future. Last week was Isaac's father, Abraham, and this week is kind of about the relationship between the two of them. We're focused on Isaac, but it's also that father-son Relationship you get some of tricky. that going. Now, the Bible doesn't give us a lot of information, save the fact his father was going to kill him once upon a time. It's a little bit traumatic. What do you think? Would have called the police in today's era. Mm. Extra, see, my mouth is open. Extra, could you imagine being Isaac and here's your, you know, your dad saying, What did I do? God, well, right. <laughs> why, why are you binding me up? It's, it's an interesting dynamic and relationship that we see God deliver through. It, it, it's a, a, a strange story. It's enigmatic. It's mysterious. And it's related to the cross. Fascinating. Because we know a father who so loved the world that he did sacrifice his son now, don't we? That's right. We're going to hear about that right now in our dramatic reenactment. Let's go there now. And the Lord appeared unto Abraham in the plains of Mamre. שלי לרענן אתכם ולהביא לכם אוכל ומים. שבו בבקשה. איפה שרה אשתך? היא באוהל. בעוד שנה יהיה לכם בן. <laughs> שיחקי שרה, כי האושר יהיה גורלו של בנך. הוא יביא אושר לעולם. <laughs> אבל אושרו יגיע מאמונה ומסבל. לעת עתה שיחקי. The word in Hebrew for angel is the word malak. Comes from the Ugaritic verb lak, which means to send. The word angel and the word messenger are the same in the Hebrew Bible and in Greek, angelos, the same word, messenger and angel. Why is that? because we're looking at the delivering of messages. And oh, what a message we have here. Never mind the word. Now let's take a look at the moment in the book. We get to the story in chapter 18 of Bereshit, Genesis. It's worth considering what comes before. Avram was just circumcised. I don't want to speak in a way that could be construed as inappropriate for television or for a religious audience, but he was in pain considering he just had a surgical operation. And the way the story is set up, it is the heat of the day. 
I mention that because Jews alight upon the fact that Avram was particularly discomforted. And you know what it's like? When you're uncomfortable, you don't want to reach out to others because we tend to turn inward. This man was different. Discomforted though he was, he sees these messengers. He doesn't know they're angels. And he comes and extends hospitality to them. Refreshment, food, the pouring one of water. You know, the word hospitality and the word hospital are cut from the same cloth. That is to say, there's a kind of healing when we're hospitable. It's all related. What's worthy of note here is the fact that the one who's extending hospitality is suffering in the process. We read in the Newer Testament, do not neglect to show hospitality for some have entertained angels unaware. Not only did they entertain angels, they did something else. They inaugurate their own ultimate deliverance. It's a fascinating story that Avram and his wife were vexed for years. Not all trials go away with, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Well, I want to go to a church that can really make the bad man stop. You know, truth be known, some things linger. It doesn't mean there isn't a breakthrough. It doesn't mean there's no deliverance to come. But there is suffering, and there's a biblical promise about those who, through faith and patience, inherit a promise. It seemed to me that uh, Sarah was a little, uh, she had lost patience a little sooner in the game. So when she first hears of, uh, uh, that she's going to be pregnant, uh, she laughs. <laughs> the word Isaac, or Yitzchak, comes from a word meaning to laugh. We live in a world today when many think that deliverance, biblical deliverance, is in fact laughable. Not so. I read the text and read stories of God breaking through. And by the way, the word breakthrough, as in waiting for the breakthrough, means just that. There's something that uh, for all intents and purposes, is impenetrable. And you know what happens? God breaks through. Is it just for the Jew or is it for you? It's a reasonable question. It's a rhetorical one because the answer is for all. Well, you say, yeah, maybe that's from the Jewish people. It's for those who walk by faith. There is a great reward. And after a series of uh, a sequence of sufferings uh, after being tested by time and circumstance finally the miracle child is going to be born it's not just good news coming to these ancient Jews all of us are reminded that there's good things to come when we walk by faith and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken for Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. את המילה, את הדם. זו הבטחה שקוימה. למה? מכל האנשים על האדמה, למה הוא בחר בנו? שמו יהיה יצחק, כי הוא גרם לנו לצחוק. אני עדיין לא מאמינה שדבר כזה יכול לקרות. ילדתי לך בן, אברהם. בזקנתך ילדתי. אני כל כך גאה. When you get a professor type, or a theologian to talk about childbirth. 
there really is the potential of missing the moment by a long shot, you know, the intellectual jargon. There's a certain kind of tenderness. There's a certain experience that the, the, the movie captures, that gentle moment, that, that mother with child. I think it's hard for a male to understand that, and it's easy for a theologian just to dive into the text and the context and, context and word studies and just miss the tenderness of the moment entirely. I don't want to apologize for who I am. I got to run with it, but there's something about seeing it. There's a kind of soulish beauty there. Certainly it's the story of a mother with a child, but in conjunction with that, if not beyond that, it's the story of a dream come true, a miracle that's happened, the end of a journey, a long wait. There's a sense of fulfillment. When I think of fulfillment, I think of being full and being filled. There's biblical language, my cup runneth over, to use the old classical King James talk, and that certainly is Sarah's feeling it's her mind on the matter in chapter 21 we're told Adonai visited Sarah just as he had said there's that moment of deliverance when it all comes clear the sacredness of a moment the Hebrew padak as in the Lord visited it's also the Lord remembered and this speaks to me of a question that we ask, if not verbally, at the feeling level. Sometimes we wonder, does God really remember? It's a question we ask as sometimes we're in a wilderness. Uh, we can go to church and it's always preached that walking with God is the oasis and the oasis is here. I'm not to say that there's no watering holes to speak of, but sometimes it's a long journey. But God watches over his word to performance, and he brings about a great deliverance. In this case, a woman who could not bear a child. And deliverance would come through this womb that wouldn't open. And there's a child who would come, who then, as we'll see, is going to be offered up to be sacrificed. This is a story about a woman's struggle. This is a story about God's plan, but it's a story that points to another story when the father of us all, through a woman who couldn't bear a child, is going to bring forth a great deliverer. If you only watch us on television, you're missing additional content available only on our social media sites, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. You can always visit our website, which is home base for all of our ministry activities and information. There you can sign up for our free monthly newsletter, watch the TV program, or visit the online store. You can sign up for a tour of Israel and Petra, or a cruise to Greece and Ephesus. Please contact us for more information. We would love to connect with you on our social media sites. Now, here's Abraham's toughest test. And it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham. Abraham. <laughs> And God said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee unto the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. אנחנו ממשיכים מכאן. אנחנו עולים לעבוד את אדוני. נחזור אחר כך. אבא, 
אבא, העצים אצלי, האש אצלך, איפה הסלע עולה? בני, אדוני ייתן לנו את הסלע עולה. את הסכין בליבי אם לא הייתי יכול. מצטער. אני יודע שסיפרתי לך על זה כבר. ואז הנס, העיל מופיע, הקרניים שלו אחוזות בסמך. שרה, את יכולה לנוח. הקורבן הוא עליו. הבן שלנו חי. I find it very interesting that Avraham, when he heard God tell him to go sacrifice Yitzchak or Isaac, there's no record of him telling Sarah on the front end. After the fact, when the boy's brought back, then uh, you can tell the story. But on the front end, I think not. I mention that because I was pleased to develop the story of the tender moment between a mother and child. After all that she had been through, if her husband came around and said, Honey, I heard the voice of the Lord. I'm going to go kill Junior. I think she would have taken the knife and stuck it in him and would have been forgiven for it. Well, never mind my conjecture. Sometimes God beckons us to do things that don't comport with sensibilities. This story in the book Bereshit in Genesis, in the Hebrew world, is called the Akedah, which means the binding, particularly the binding of Isaac. And what a story it is that this man, who's the father of the nation, is going to take a miracle-born son and have him carry the wood up to a place where he is then intended to be sacrificed, only to be stopped in mid-act and told that God will himself provide a lamb. There's a few things at play here. One, in chapter 22, we're told that the Lord tested Abraham in this way. And it can be said that if there isn't a test, there ain't a testimony. There are tests. I wouldn't suggest you endeavor to do this uh, with your own. One of the upshots of all this is clarifying in no uncertain terms that God does not want child sacrifice. I mention that because in antiquity, in North Africa and in the ancient Near East, there are many examples of the ancients offering up child sacrifices. The firstborn, it's to placate a deity. If you look in the Hebrew Bible, individuals are beckoned to offer the first fruits. There's grain products, there's animals, not your own children. Uh, but offering up children was part and parcel to ancient religion. This certainly offers a, a challenge to that in no uncertain terms in the biblical economy. But more than that, there's a picture here of the ultimate redemption. Why do I say that? Again, to repeat, there is the father who is working with a woman who cannot conceive it takes divine agency, it takes miracle, subsequent to which she gives birth, in the wake of which this special son, who is the carrier of the promise of redemption through Abraham, blessing to the world, this son is going to be taken and sacrificed only to be stopped. It begs the question, what's at play here? 
beyond offering a corrective to a sacrificial practice that existed in antiquity. There's something here that telescopes into the future, to my way of thinking, that beckons an individual to understand something about the redemption to come. When God the Father will affect a miracle through a woman who cannot bear a child. And by the way, messengers come and speak to her and Joseph and say as much that a miracle child will be born and you're going to name him Yeshua or Jesus. And by the way, the word Jesus is a word meaning to save, to deliver, or to redeem. To me, it's tragic. The word deliverance has been hijacked. There's a famous movie, Deliverance, and it has themes that aren't really appropriate for a biblical audience, so we have to preface by saying divine deliverance. This, friends, is a picture of divine deliverance, and we find it in the Hebrew Bible. It's at play in this text, and I hope it's at play in your own life. That is to say, there is a God the Father who so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son who carried his wood to a cross and in so doing became the sacrifice and the deliverer for us all. This series is titled Divine Deliverance and today we see the divine delivering Isaac from being a sacrificial child. Mm. I mean, a sacrifice on the altar. That's intense. Yeah, and I can tell just in the tonal inflection and the facial expression, Mom, <laughs> what do you think about that, you know, putting a kid on an altar like I gotta that? i got to tell you, this is horrible to say. If God told me to sacrifice one of my sons, I'd be like, okay, thank you. Bye-bye. No thanks. Wouldn't happen yet. But I don't think so. Here, there's so much riding in that promised son. God had promised a son, and Abraham waited so long, and that willingness to offer you know, it, it really says something about Abraham and that it says something about Isaac. He was willing to go along with the program. So there was a vision from God. It makes me think as we're sitting here, how many times maybe all of us have missed that vision that God had for us? Yes, and sometimes it's a trying vision. It's not an easy piece of demand, you know, that, uh, uh, and it's a testing moment here. And uh, if you're going to have a testimony, you got to have a test. And, uh, you know, Abraham passed and so did Isaac and praise God. Divine deliverance has gone on through the ages. And at the last minute, yeah. mm. I mean, you know, you, you see this whole scenario in your mind with, with Abraham with this the knife up here just ready, right. and then there's you know, the ram in the thicket kind of thing. You know, and if there's a complaint box in heaven, it's going to be filled with a lot of people that say, God, why did you wait to come through just mm. in the last minute? He seems to have a habit of that. Mm -hmm. You know, we always trials would go away on the quick. Uh, God does come through. Sometimes it's it's the 11th hour, to be sure. And I was going to say the flip side, but if we look down history, there was a son, God's own son, on that supposed same spot that there was not a sacrificial lamb. It was actually him. He went through and the sacrifice was made. It's quite the picture. I endeavor to tell the story and it's worth telling. We see it in Genesis. We see it in the New Testament, uh, God giving up a son. I, I think in this whole series, there's a lot of last minute answers, yeah. not just with this character, but in many of them. Well, the nature of deliverance, you know, we cry out and, uh, you know, God delivers, but sometimes, you know, we can just be in a pinch and be there for a while. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a testing moment. It's a sifting moment. Some of you may be going through it, to tell you the truth. Uh, I mean, right now, it's a reasonably good season in my life, all things considered. But there's mountains and valleys and deserts, and we go through all of it. And if you're feeling that pinch, uh, keep on looking to the Lord because he is the divine deliverer. Just like David said, he does come through. That's right. Thank you so much for that insight today. More to come. We'll be right back.
Around 35 years ago, I, a young intern, pitched something to a guy named Zola Levitt. I was working for him at the time and said, listen, let's put together this program for people that can't go to Bible college or seminary. Let's bring it to them. He went with it. It was expensive at the time. Someone, God bless him, he's in heaven now, Thad Wazawatsky, um, donated the money to start it all up, and we created, Zola and I did, this Institute of Jewish Christian Studies. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people have tapped into it because they want to go deep. They want to look at the good news through the eyes of the Jews, and if that's you, do consider the offer because it's rich. I'm not saying that to be self-serving. It's just the story to press into the Jewish roots of the Jesus story. Goodness gracious, it's fantastic, and it's there for you. Today's offer, Institute of Jewish and Christian Studies. Can I just do a, a quick applause? We've walked through that. Yes. We've done all 12 courses. I know today they're talking about the first three courses. Do this. This will change your life. Your insight, your knowledge changed our lives, and we are for the better because of it. So thank you for 30 years ago doing what you did. I promise you will not regret investing in this ministry, first three courses, but I'm, get them all. All 12 are available. It's great. We end our program today with a song from our founder, Zola Levitt, A Thousand Years. And a word till then, Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. You'll sing Baruch Hashem, a thousand years, a thousand years, you'll sing Baruch Hashem. Your King who came your king forevermore a thousand years a thousand years your king forevermore join us right now for additional content that is only available on our social media sites, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Visit our website, levitt.com, for the current and past programs, the television schedule, tour information, and our free monthly newsletter, which is full of insightful articles and news commentary. View it online, or we can ship it directly to your mailbox every month. Also on our website is the online store, there, you can order this week's resource, or you can always give us a call at 1-800-WONDERS. Your donations to Our Jewish Roots help us to support these organizations as they bless Israel. Please remember we depend on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. This has been a paid program brought to you by Zola Levitt Ministry.